challenge of how to start your healthcare company in terms of your staffing company, whether that's the medical staffing that you want to start. I hope everyone's okay and um, give me some hearts, give me some love. Let me know that you can hear me in the chat. That would be good. Team, that would be great. If you can hear me clearly, that would be great. So let me continue. So welcome to the five day challenge of how to, to start a healthcare staffing recruitment business because it's really important that we can think about all the different options that we've got. You know, we're living in, in this world where we can do any type of business that we want to do. And I think it's really important for us to look at additional options, not just if you're if you're with if you've got a home care company, for example, okay, don't just stick with home care. If you've got a recruitment care agency, don't just stick with recruitment care agency because you never know. You could lose hours, etc. And then you're back to square one. So today and the five day challenge is about you learning about medical staffing, healthcare staffing, recruitment. For example, we're gonna go do a further training to do with CQC and providing a home care agency, but I'm going through the aspects of items that people were interested in. So I'm trying to cover this in this five day challenge as well, because I want you to be here in this group, in this community, for example, so that you're getting your um, knowledge that you want to actually find out about as well. So welcome to the five day challenge of how to start a staffing recruitment business. So thank you for that. Thank you for letting let me know you can hear me clearly. That's great. So let's delve into this. So you may be intrigued to owning your own healthcare staffing firm and you can make potentially millions from this as well. This is not pie in the sky. This is not a get rich quick scheme. It is over a number of years. It could be one to two years. Usually the two year mark is usually the, the usual, but you never know, you could be the unusual and make it happen in you know 12 months for example but it's going to take it's going to take some time it's not something that's instant quick fix okay so i just wanted to point that out to you so imagine starting your own medical staffing agency and making potentially millions so are you ready to take on the challenge and turn your dream into a reality well, you're in the right place and I'm going to go through some step-by-step -step instructions and I'm going to provide you with insider tips as well and expert advice on how to build a successful staffing firm, firm, medical staffing firm from the ground up. So you don't want to miss this opportunity because I want to help you to transform your business and create multiple income streams because you really want to 10x your business if you've got a, a 10 year mission and vision statement. You don't want to just be fixed in one road, i.e. home care or staffing agency. Mix the two, get strong in one and then expand and do another healthcare business. There's over 50 healthcare business types that you can do at a minimum. My book here, which is on Amazon, it says, uh, we will love you from a distance. And this is about carepreneurs supercharging and really owning their own business. It is on Amazon for sale. I can put the link in the chat, but it goes through, in this book, it goes through all the aspects of owning multiple businesses because really you should be doing multiple businesses it tells you about my story it also goes talks about when we was going through the covid the pandemic for example it also tells you here 
to build an action plan, to create an action plan, because you should have an action plan, and it will help you. This also talks about how healthcare workers can be business owners as well. And I talk about all the different types of businesses that you can do, and it ranges from patient transport, telecare, virtual care, recruitment care agency, imaging, diagnostics, healthcare, mobile apps, development, for example, recruitment, healthcare, software, online pharmacy, you could do insurance, you could do training programs, wellness programs, there's lots of staffing things that you can do. But this is in my book here, it's on Amazon. But I'll continue. So in day one, we're going to go through research and planning. Start by researching the healthcare industry that you want to go into. You need to identify the market. You want to develop a business plan. I'm hearing all too often that people are going into business and they don't have a business plan. And you don't know where you're going to start then. If you don't have a plan, then you plan to fail. If you don't have a business plan and you don't know what you want for your business, then how are you going to make it a success? How is that going to grow and develop? And how can you measure what it is that your business is doing if you don't have a action plan, for example? If you don't have a business plan, for example? So we're going to go into day one. We're going to talk today about research, developing a business plan, outlining the goals and the strategies for your success. Day two, we're going to cover some, I'm not a legal expert, but we're going to cover some legal and financial preparation from a business point, business person point of view, not from a lawyer, not from an accountant, not from a financial perspective. I am not reg regulated with the financial um, act, for example, and I'm not a lawyer, but I can talk as a business owner of the things that you need to be aware of, like registering your business, obtaining necessary licenses on day two, this is we'll cover. What permits and set up your financial infrastructure. You need to seek legal advice from professionals to ensure compliance and legal financial stability. Now on day three, I'll be talking about building your dream. Recruit healthcare professionals such as nurses, doctors, allied healthcare professionals and establish partnerships with healthcare facilities to secure your staffing services. On day four, we're going to cover marketing, branding, create a strong brand identity, identity and develop a market strategy to attract the right clients and healthcare professionals. You'll be able to utilize the social media, networking events, and online platforms to promote your agency. We'll be going through that on day four. On day five, we'll be talking about how you can launch and grow and scale, officially launch your medical staffing agency and begin providing staffing services to healthcare facilities. Monitoring your progress, you'll adjust the strategies as needed and you'll continue to grow so are you up for the challenge say challenge so that i know that you're up for the challenge hashtag challenge because today we're going through day one of the recruitment so let's dive in shall we let's get ready so day one, today, you need to look at, I hope you got your pen and paper so that you're making notes or even type it on a, a you know, Word document, for example. So explore your opportunities in the medical staffing industry because you need to really explore that and get a good understanding so that you know what it is that you need. So you want to gain insight into the staffing industry, the medical staffing industry, the nursing staffing industry, the recruitment care agency 
industry, for example. So I want you to really be able to go into this and to really think about, do I want to do medical staffing? What type of medical staffing do I want to do? What type of staff members do I want to provide? What is your objective? Okay, so make notes and really think about your, your growth as well. So I'm going to be introducing you to the medical staffing industry, size, growth and potential. And this is huge. There's no ceiling. You can break that glass ceiling with ease because you don't have to be in a certain location like with home care. You've got to be in that town, for example. But with the staffing agency, the staffing recruitment agency, you can be anywhere, national, worldwide. The world and the choice is your oyster for you to decide. Okay? So I just wanted to point that out because the potential for growth is huge. Whereas with home care, you have to be in that certain location. Then you've got to apply for another area depending on where you are in the world like in the uk you can set up a medical staffing agency easily if you're in um, other parts of the world like ireland for example scotland you have to be licensed the same as in the states there's a lot of um, states where you have to be licensed but either way it still it still is beneficial to do so because your growth is you can grow Okay, so I wanted to point that out to you. So the medical staffing industry it plays a crucial role in addressing the staffing needs of healthcare facilities, including hospitals, clinics, nursing homes, and other facilities. It is where you will do recruitment, you will place staff, whether it's permanently or temporarily. Now the permanent market is huge, as well we seem to be all thinking about temporary you know so it's become like everyone's jumping towards temporary all the time and we're kind of missing the permanent side of things because then you've got more leverage if you was to combine the two temp and permanent for example so what type of staff will you provide is it going to be physicians nurses therapists allied healthcare professionals for example the industry itself is significant. It is huge. The, there's a broader aspect of healthcare that people aren't even aware of, for example. Okay? So it all depends on the facilities in various countries that you want to provide your staffing firm to. So with market research, the size of medical staffing industry is very substantial with billions of dollars in annual revenue worldwide billion trillions so in the united states alone the medical staff in industry is estimated to generate billions of dollars in revenue annually and this is the same for the uk as well okay so the industry, it is a diverse range of staffing agencies from we've got large firms to smaller firms to micro to niche firms. And when I say niche, that's when you're providing healthcare. But what type of healthcare are you providing? Because healthcare is such a large word. Because like my book here, I've mentioned 50, 50 healthcare business types you can do. Okay, this book is on Amazon. And you can look at saying, right, okay, let me do three to begin with in the first year. So you don't want to just look at the whole 50 because that would be a huge thing. And we do have a group coaching, which we do, which covers the 50 target areas that you can do as well. Okay, so this industry, like I said, if you want to be niche, then think about, okay, I'm going to provide healthcare workers, nurses, and doctors, for example, three. But it's, it's entirely up to you. Whether you want to provide temporary or permanent 
that is entirely up to you. Either way, it's a winner. And if you combine both of them together, it is a very lucrative market. So you want to look at your specialities. You also want to look at the geographical areas where you want to operate. Have you thought about the locations of where you want to operate? You want to look at where there's trends, which seems to be a growth. Okay, so there has been a consistent growth over the years. The past decade is driven by several factors. And that is increasing demand for healthcare services, population growth, aging demographics. We've got the medical technology now contributing to the rise in demand for healthcare services, creating a need for more healthcare professionals. I'm just going into a bit of the history with you here. So, Staffing shortages. So you will see that we are faced with shortages of qualified healthcare professionals. And this includes nurses, physicians, allied healthcare workers, nurses, healthcare workers, support workers, specialist support workers. So staffing agencies play a crucial role in addressing these shortages by sourcing and placing qualified candidates. Now, you would have heard me speak about the profit margins that can be gained from that, and this will be on day five. So I will be going into more pricing structures and prices on day five. So you want to look at being flexible for that healthcare facility that you're providing your staff to. But they also want to be able to rely on you, to know that they can call you and you're going to support them and provide them with the staff because you are a professional and you're efficient and you're able to provide staff at short notice. Or maybe you're going to supply a permanent staff member and they know that you've got good staff members because you've placed them in their organisation. So maybe they may want to buy out and have your staff member whereby you say, right, okay, I charge 20% of what that yearly salary is going to be. So as a one-off, you would then charge that fee, for example, 20%. So there's technology advancements and automations now. So the if you can adopt the technology, including applicant tracking, the software, online platforms, telehealth solutions, all streamlined into your recruitment processes, it will enhance your operational efficiency for medical staffing and nursing and home care agencies as well. So you will see that there is the, there's such a massive expansion at the moment, okay? So industries are continuing to expand in the healthcare sector and the geographical regions driven by evolving healthcare needs and emerging opportunities. So there's potential for growth here, potential opportunities. So the medical staff in industry offers numerous opportunities for entrepreneurs and investors interested in launching or expanding agencies. There's some potential areas of opportunities that include specialised staffing. Okay, so you're catering to a specific healthcare speciality or a niche, such as it could be travel nursing, it could be um, complex care, it could be allied healthcare, it could be locums, for example. So think about what type of staff members you want to provide. There's going to be also geographical expansions. Once you've established a presence in an underserved or high demand region with staffing shortages, you'll be able to really expand and go and grow and grow and grow and grow. And you could even be global worldwide because we've helped some clients to do that as well. Okay, so 
Think about diversifying your services that you currently have. Offer a range of staffing solutions, including temporary contract permanent placements, telehealth care staffing services. That's the new word now. So you need to think about that because telehealth care is here and we are getting, well, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And we are growing and growing and growing. So it's not something that we can avoid. So I want you to look at that and see, we, we're, we're gonna do some trainings on these things anyway, but I want you to think about what type of agency it is that you want to have because their demands are getting bigger and bigger for telehealth staffing services, okay? So we've got to look at embracing technology. We can't leave it behind, okay? If you can leverage on technology, for example, and automations to streamline your operations, improve your candidate sourcing, and enhance client engagement, that's going to make you stand out. You also want to build strategic partnerships, collaborating with healthcare facilities, educational institutions, professional associations, and other industry stakeholders to access talent pool because you want to provide them with talent. That means high caliber staff members that are highly qualified, that it's very difficult to just find them. They're not like the average Joe Bloggs type of job. They are specialists. And if you can provide that, then you will stand out in the crowd and you will get in a lot easier. If you don't, because now they're getting, they're raising the bar. They really are raising the bar. And I'm seeing it because they are wanting staff members to have this level of qualifications, training, etc. They're raising the bar and we need to raise the bar as well.